He gives you the brown phenotype. Okay? Now, here's a little video I want to show you about waltzing mice. Anybody in here ever have a, a waltzing mouse? Ms. Rockman said she saw a waltzing mole one time. But she was wearing funny glasses, and I don't know about <laughs> All right, well, let me show you what a waltzing mice does, or the waltzing mouse does. Here's a whole little web page on waltzing mice. They occur in nature. You could probably get some at a pet shop if that's what you're into. Sorbet was this particular mouse's name. It's like she was a person or something. <laughs> There's Sorbet. What do you notice about Sorbet? She's going in a circle. She can't get on a wheel. Watch. Oh, am I moving on? Does she, can she straight. use the wheel? No. Oh. She can't run straight. That looks cool. That would work out more than a normal. How does she get around? She's wide in her circle? She just takes bigger circles. She thinks in her mind, like, I really just want to go there. <laughs> 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 so they're, like, literally incapable of, like, walking in anything. Like, what if they want her to walk in a square? They, they're only, they can only walk in circles. Are you kidding me? Can they only go one way? Oh, this big NASCAR. Just keeps taking left turns. Really? Wait, what? How is it? Wait, what? 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 Wait, the inability to walk in a straight line is because dad gave her a little R allele and mom gave her a little R allele and she has this condition called the waltz, the waltzing condition. Does that occur? So if somebody's trying to sell you a waltzing mouse, don't think it's going to be up dancing. Right? A waltzing mouse is going to be doing this all day. Right? It's actually a neurological condition. Uh, there's some protein made in the in his in her brain that messes up the signal somehow and has an inability to walk straight. Just when you thought you've seen it all, huh? It doesn't only occur in mice. I, I think it grow, it occurs in other rodents also. Is it over? Well, there's only so much walking in a circle I can I can stand. <laughs> Can we watch the sheep video again? <laughs> so anyway, this is a neurological disorder. It's a genetic disease. I guess you call it a genetic condition because of two little arms. All right, back to your Wednesday assignments. Uh, ooh, three people have already got it done. Uh, I'll show you how to do number one and then move on. haven't realized it yet. This little button right here is handy. It enlarges the screen for you. Gives you a lot of space. Here's our problem. Our question. Okay. I want you to do the five steps. 
So step number one, the phenotype cross. It's a heterozygous running heterozygous, not heterozygous. All right. So it has the heterozygous running, and it's also black, but it's heterozygous black. All right. And we're going to mate it with another mouse, but this mouse is normal, but it's homozygous for the running gene, or the running alleles, I guess you should just call. Okay. And it's also black, but it's homozygous black. So we've got a couple of normal mice here. We're going to cross them and see what happens. What's the phenotype ratio? Step number two, convert your phenotype to genotype. So the running gene is heterozygous. That means big R, little r. It's black, but it's heterozygous black. Cross with another mouse who's also normal for running, but it's homozygous for the running gene, and it's also homozygous for black. So let's go ahead and complete it here. All right, any questions so far? Write your phenotype cross, and then your genotype cross. Yes, question? Next, let's put our uh, Punnett square in. And we need a table that's got five rows and five columns. I'm going to grab my uh, corner over here and make it a little more symmetrical, maybe something like that. Okay. I'm also going to highlight. I like to have my alleles be bold. I like to have them right in the center of each box. And I like a pretty color. We'll go, okay, we'll go pink. All right. Now, please remember, guys, we want to satisfy two laws. The law of segregation. And we also want to satisfy the law of independent arrangement or assortment. Okay? So, here we go. I'm going to put this parent here and this parent here. Let's do this parent first. This parent's easy. The only possibility is big R, big B, isn't it? Big R, big B, big R, big B, big R, big B. This is the interesting one here. We could have big R, but the big R could arrange with the big B, or the big R could arrange with the little B. That's independent assortment. You could also have the little r with the big B or the little r with the little b. I know I've done it right when I have two little notches next to each of my alleles. All right? That segregation and then the That is independent assortment. So, what do I have here? I've got big R. Big R, big B. But my big R can also hang out with my little B. 
little R, Big B, 